President Trump welcomed the administration's reimposed Iran sanctions with a tweet today writing, the Iran sanctions have officially been cast. These are the most biting sanctions ever imposed, and in November, they ratchet up to yet another level. Anyone doing business with Iran will not be doing business with the United States. I am asking for world peace, nothing less. This, as Iranian President Hassan Rouhani declared, Iran cannot enter talks with the, and this is a quote, untrustworthy Trump administration as long as Tehran is under economic sanctions. With me now to break it all down, Stephen Yates, former National Security Advisor to Vice President Cheney and current International Advisory CEO, Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano, Heritage Foundation Vice President of Foreign and Defense Policy, and retired Gunnery Sergeant Jesse Jane Duff, current London Center for Policy Research Senior Fellow. Let me start with you, James. I am curious. We see the rhetoric, rhetoric ramping up, but I'm looking back at the rhetoric between the President and Kim Jong-un. Will we see a perhaps meeting between President Trump and Rouhani because President Trump has said he would be willing to have discussions? Well, it's, it's really up to the Iranians. In many ways, this is a replay of the strategy with North Korea because first with the United States in North Korea, is they put in place a strategy that protected our vital interests, maximum pressure, nuclear deterrence, missile defense, conventional deterrence and sanctioning. That protects the North Koreans from leaving threat. And then and then the diplomatic door is open. If they want to talk, they can talk. If they don't want to talk, fine. Our interests are protected. We're seeing the same strategy here. First, we put in the strategy which protects our interests. The heavy pressure, both from in and without, that really constrains the Iranians' ability to really destabilize the region the way they did. And then, if they want to come and talk, they come and talk. But they're... So but, it, but it's kind of like we've got the safety net before we start the conversation. Jesse, let me bring you into this with what's going on with, for instance, Daimler. They actually, uh, I think we have a statement from Daimler. I'm going to read that to you because uh, they said we have, quote, suspended our activities in Iran, which were any way very limited, until further notice according to applicable sanctions. Uh, we will continue to closely monitor the political developments, especially in connection with the future of the nuclear agreement. Look, our European allies, countries in the European Union, were opposed to our pulling out of the agreement with Iran. That has happened. The sanctions are back. And now companies from Europe do not want to threaten their business interests in the United States. So what other option does Iran have but to come to the table and talk to us? I agree completely. Uh, what Ambassador Bolton said today was very severe. He simply stated to all of these European countries, why would you want to do business with the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism? Essentially, they are the international bank of terrorist activity. With that said, these European companies are being put in a rock and a hard place because the European Union is strong arming them to request a waiver to not do business with Iran. Essentially, the United States has said the exact opposite. You will Will not do business with Iran or you will experience sanctions. So now these companies are trying to have uh, essentially respect for both the European Union and respect and regard for the United States. Let's keep in mind, Germany makes $3 billion a year from Iran. With that said, they've also had parts from Germany on okay. Iranian bombs that have blown up in Syria. So, uh, Stephen, aren't we, though, chasing the Iranians into the arms of the Russians? I don't think so. I think really what we're seeing is the Europeans and a lot of the world waking up to the fact that this president means what he says and that for once when Americans enter into agreements, if you violate the terms, there are consequences. Uh, and so I think this is part of a broader rebalancing of the approach the president has taken to Europe, uh, to the Middle East. Uh, and I think it's an important signal. So I, th I think it's, there's a lot of right in what the president has been doing and saying. It's kind of strange that the leader of a theocracy wants to enter into a tweet storm with the all-time heavyweight champion of tweet storms and thinks he's <laughs> going to come out okay. But, but James, um, you know, we know about the unrest within Iran. The economy is in a shambles. There are protests. They're threatening to kill people who protest. How long can the Iranian regime sustain itself with this kind of uh, sanctions being ramped up and the lack of investment? Yeah, yeah, probably a long time. I mean, look, they've survived through thick and thin. I mean, they've survived the Iran-Iraq war. This is a pretty resilient regime that has a pretty strong control of the country. Now, people will be miserable, but, but they can ride it out. And, and my guess is, if we go with Iranian past behavior, is when they get under a lot of pressure internally, externally, they just get more conservative and pull their, thing, pull their kind of claws in. Okay. And so my guess is they'll just kind of wait, try to wait Trump out. Wait, Trump out or Jesse, might they lash out? Would they do something rash, perhaps even stupid, and try to close the Strait of Hormuz? What, what would they do? 
I think it's the people of Iran that are standing up to this regime. They used to say death to America, now they're saying death to dictators. This regime is going to be in a position where their people will overthrow them because these sanctions are suffocating them. They no longer have food, they do not have the economy that they need, and they have spent all the money and siphoned it off to the terrorist activities throughout the world. Stephen, I apologize that I don't have a chance to get you back in on this. We've run out of time. But Stephen, Jesse, and James, thank you all for being here to discuss this.